field tomorrow. Well, our match is a little sooner than that. It starts in just a couple of minutes. But it's a tense time for the players before they step onto the rink, just before that. So they've been sharing their thoughts with us before heading in. Obviously, yeah, a little bit apprehensive before the game, but I'm um, looking forward to it. And, uh, you know, I'm going to enjoy it, hopefully. I was really pleased with my performance against Davy. Davy's just so unpredictable. He's a brilliant player. He's world number one. So I've got to take a lot of um, good things into the final after beating David. I've been here twice before. Um, not managed to uh, win the title. So that's one thing. Hopefully, third time lucky, and uh, I can do it. Yeah, Robert's a tremendous player. Um, I know the crowd will be behind him. Rightly so. But, um, if I keep playing the way I'm playing, then obviously I've got a chance. Paul has just played a great game there against uh, Davy, and uh, he's going to be a tough nut to crack. Um, get on well with Paul, so uh, hopefully we'll have a good bit of fun on the rink and it'll be a good game. A lot of people have said I've, I've not won anything outside the World Championship, but I've never swapped that, so it doesn't really bother me. But obviously I'll be trying today and hopefully the best man wins. Well, I don't know about them, but I've got butterflies, I can tell you. I'm going to have to sit down right the way through this one. Ladies and gentlemen, we've reached the moment. It is the 2007 Welsh International Open Bowls. Are you looking forward to it? Yeah! I think there's no doubt about that. We've got a, a reasonably partisan crowd because, of course, we do have a Welshman in the final, but a number of Paul Foster fans here as well, so I know they'll all be in fine voice. Right, let's get on with it. It's D-Day time. Will you please put your hands together for first, from Wales, Robert Wheel. I think it's fair to say that Robert's got one or two fans in the audience, but so has the next man in, our second finalist here this afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, another warm round of applause, please, for a fellow Celt, Paul Foster of Scotland. Well, I think it's fair to say he might be on uh, home soil, but you've got uh, a few fans in the audience as well there, Paul. What gives you that impression? Oh, just a couple of things. You work in the crowd, I think. Yeah, it's understandable. Uh, the majority of the crowd want Robert to win. Rightly so. But I've, I've got a few supporters, so I'll try my best. And you enjoy it here in Llanelli, obviously. Yes, it's great. <laughs> Love it. You have got aunts, uncles, cousins, second cousins, grandfather, grandmother, all in the audience, I suspect, and one or two fans from Islaurin along the way. So that must help. <laughs> That's true, and um, yes, yeah, so making themselves heard as well, which is great. You know, it's tremendous time for support like that. Is it like at rugby, whether it's a, a equivalent to an extra player or an extra bowl there along the way? Well, it might be worth an extra shot, but over two sets, that's, you know, it doesn't make a lot of difference, does it? Uh, I suppose not. We've seen some fantastic matches in this tournament so far, so the pressure's on. Is this one going to be a cracker? I'm sure, you know, Paul's a great player, and uh, hopefully we're going to have a good match on there today. And Paul, you feel the same? Yeah, Robert's a fantastic um, top player, so it's a toss of a coin, I think. Well, gentlemen, I best let you get on with it because they're not here to listen to me. They want to see you. The very best of luck to all of you. May the best man win. I know that it's going to be a cracking final here in 2007. Robert Paul, thanks very much indeed. Here we are. On the boys, just boys and ready to go at the start of this 2007 Welsh International Open final. I'm going to leave you in the as ever very capable and poetic hands of your commentators, David Corkill and David Rhys-Jones. Well, two former world champions here, but they're both looking for their first WBT ranking event win. It should be a cracker, Corky. I'm expecting this to be a great, great match. I really am. Robert Wheel having survived the onslaught of Jonathan Ross. And again, Paul Foster coming out and past the world number one, David Gurley. So both these players have responded to tremendous pressure today already. And as uh, stillness falls in the auditorium, it's uh, Robert Wheel to deliver the first bowl. Made a very slow start in the semi-final, hoping for better things here. It's a very decent start, centre of the, of the rink. Just uh, 18 inches through. Yes, both these players. Fortunate enough that they don't have to change colour of bowls or shirts for the final. 
would make me feel a lot more comfortable. Robert Wheel was saying to me after his semi-final that the first set, his balls were not making it back into the centre of the rink, and as the game progressed, the atmosphere in the arena got warmer, and the rink started to bend a little bit more, and his balls really started to react properly. And as you can see, he's finding the centre of the rink, no problem. Very close second. Robert's ball is four inches short of the jack. The gap between your ball and the jack is two and a half inches. Peter Rolf there, the uh, marker for this uh, Welsh International Open final. He's the competition secretary of the Welsh Indoor Bowls Association. Well, Paul Prosser just came off the mat there for a second to look at the monitor which is available to him at the side of the rink. It's there for the players to see the overhead shot. Gives him a good idea if he's got enough space to get around this front short red ball. Fantastic effort. Finished in third position. And Paul Foster getting married next year. And that's his fiance, Pamela Wilcock. One great. Made her way down this morning from Scotland. The plane apparently had to circle around Cardiff Airport several times, circling for about 45, 50 minutes before they could land. The weather conditions not ideal today, so just as well perhaps that we're playing this indoors in the very comfortable and warm surroundings of the Selwyn Samuel Centre. Also trying to filter his way through on this backhand. This needs to pull back very quickly. Not quite. It's just the one shot in it. That's going to force Paul to play the other side now. The area around the jack very crowded. Well, he uses a big wide ball. He'll come in in the high arc and a little touch on the jack would be a real bonus. He won't want to get to the front of the ball though. This has to be careful. Well, he's given it a go. Decent line. How's the pace? Oh, that was a good effort. One shot, green. So a slowly, softly start for this final. Excellent drawing balls coming in on the jack there. Yes, Paul Foster, tall Scott, very athletic stance. It's geared for the outdoor greens as well as the indoors. You see a massive big step forward. Little backswing, a push through. Paul's always had the same delivery action for all the years I've known him. Here he comes. Came to prominence. Paul Foster at 10 years ago when he was qualifying for these televised events. And won the world singles. 
first time as a qualifier. And that was the same case for David Gurley a couple of years before in 1996 when David won the World Singles. He also was a qualifier through those very tough events. Good adjustment. <laughs> yes, it's some time now since a qualifier actually came through to win a ranking event. If you ask the top 16, they feel under more pressure now from the qualifiers than ever before. And if uh, anyone out there feels like challenging the top 16, all you do is to join the Professional Bowls Association. You'll have automatic entry to the qualifying events. You could find yourself here on the portable rink in front of the television cameras. This ball just holding off a little bit. It needs to bend just a bit more. Touch off the ball to drop. Oh, that's close. The crowd here willing that one to drop. I think this might be a measure. Nice relaxed atmosphere on the on the rink. The uh, marker, Peter Ralph, hasn't yet announced whether, in his opinion, it's red or green. Doesn't look happy. I think he's pushed through it. Well, he hasn't. He's gone the other way. Dropped it short. It's normally a click of the fingers or a slap of the leg from Paul when he plays a ball that's a little bit pacey. This time, he's dropped it short. The trouble is, we don't know who's lying. That's the problem on this one. And it's a difficult one for Robert to get out of because if he drops on his own red ball, he can bring the jack back towards the green. He'll want to stay on the backhand. Oh, he's given this a go. Needs to get the ball and drop. Oh, unlucky it held up. Paul Foster had already started to clap that ball. He thought that it was going to drop in. Well, it's in with a chance, I suppose. On a measure. So, marker, Peter Ralph just chucking the bowls, propping them up. Let's have a look at that last bowl. That's Paul Foster clapping already. He thought that was coming in. It didn't fall. Uh. I think Robert realised that to be absolutely certain of shot, the ball needed to drop in. Oh, that's close. That's very close. I think Andy Ewins was asking for permission to take that one out, not as the shot, perhaps, but uh, in order so that he could measure more easily. One shot, three. One shot, three. That's the green bowl of Paul Foster winning the measure there. He starts slowly but effectively. Two singles. Two nil.
Big strength of Paul Foster is that drawing ball. And of course, more than capable of getting out of trouble with the pace shot. In that respect, Corky, the both players answer to the same description. Because Wheel, too, he's uh, well known for his silk like drawing ability, but also for his, uh, his strike rate. Yes, they're both skips in their own rights, of course, for their international teams, their respective international teams, although Paul Foster will not be featuring next month at the Home Internationals for Scotland. having been excluded because he couldn't make a trial due to business commitments. It's a rather controversial decision there on the part of the Scottish selectors because mm. he was unable to make the, uh, the trial. They decided to leave him out of the team. It's not looking very clever, really. When you see him, he's obviously in good form if he's in the final of this event and looks like he's going to go to world number three. Oh. What? Strength and depth in Scotland. They feel that they can do without the skills of Paul Foster. There's always a certain amount of thinking that you have to make a stand on these things, but this man's obviously in good form. I think he might contemplate playing another one into this head because you know, if he can drop the ball down on the backhand would be good, or if he could lock a ball in. You probably think Robert will have a go at this. Uh, so he's looking at the forehand. Certainly out wide. If he's that wide, he's covering. He's not going near the head. I'm a little bit surprised at that this early. Well, he's anticipating a drive, or covering against the drive at least. I don't think Robert will drive at this. He'll play pace. There he comes. Controlled weight. Jack in the air. Oh, it came off on the way back. <laughs> yes, it, it hit the jack, plum. Jack went up in the air and fell back on top of the moving bowl. Bounced off, off the rink. And on the respot, it's a red bowl that wins it. Well, full of event, that. Yes, it wasn't a full-out drive from Robert. It was quick but controlled. And there we see the jack coming down and hits the red ball. Paul hadn't actually covered the, the respot. Yard. Paul needing to take a yard off his last delivery. Oh, a movement there. Start all over again. Now take your time. That's it. Put the ball down. That's a good idea. Start the whole process over again. And big drawing balls have to go out in the high line. Looking good. No, didn't put him off. Well, in their practice hours on this rink, the players do actually practice drawing to the spot. So the ball obviously knew the line that was necessary. It was all on the weight then. Follow this ball. Mm, click of the fingers, too heavy. It's going to lose another single. One shot, green. No major problem for Robert Wheel yet, but uh, if, he, if he goes on like this, you have to find some way of uh, stopping it. Three singles for Foster, 3 0. As we can see, Paul Foster trying to keep going on the 23 metre jack length, reduced it to 25, down to 23. He'll be very happy to do that. Likes the short jacks and the mat, of course, is well up the rink. 
as far as it can go. Yes, and he just about got away with that. That uh, Jack almost toppled into the ditch and would, would it then have been returned to Robert Wheel for his choice. But no, he stayed alive. Brought back to the three metre mark on the tee. Any Jack which is delivered to within three metres of the ditch is brought back to that uh, standard position. Well, the double kiss from the Jack did not help Robert Whale on that occasion. One green. There's Rhiannon, Robert Wheels' daughter. Gap between your and to ball see how and Dad's getting on. Just under two inches. The ball, the ball gap between Roberts and the Jack is three and a half. Roberts' ball is just about a ball through. Paul's got a chance to rest the red ball. He doesn't want to make a connection on his own, though. deliberate by Paul to get behind the jack this is struggling Letting may well be well be well known as a centre of excellence for rugby, but uh, in bowls circles, the Selwyn Samuel Centre is uh, is famous throughout the Principality and beyond. That's a good goal by Paul. Big crowd here for this uh, this final. Just looking at this, there's a chance for Robert Wheel to play a good shot. He'll try and narrow things a little bit, try and get on the inside edge of the ball. He'll come off, the natural angle is to come off and get the two balls. Well, he certainly narrowed it, but didn't push through it. That's what he was looking for. One shot, green. Well, this is getting monotonous. <laughs> Entertaining, though. Singles all the way for Foster, who leads 4-0 after four ends of this first set. Well, that's the nature of the beast. When you get a game like this, it's always going to be tight. One shot, although he's not surprising. There will be a break at some stage. Careful, Paul. Be breaking any ankles in the major final. The shortest possible jack, but the jack is sitting on the on the tee, of course. Just look at that. 
that's how far the mat is up the green. Foster is, couldn't have taken up any further and still had room for a minimum 23 meter jack. But not just delivering the jack beautifully, but putting his first bow there as well. That's uh, grabbing the control. That's a good tip for any bowlers that are watching. If you want to play the minimum jack length, bring the mat up to the peg. And then roll the jack anywhere from the tee through. As long as it stays on the ring. That gives you a margin of error in club bowls of two metres. But in WBT terms, in these types of events, three metres. So you can afford to push the jack through two and a half metres and still be brought back to the 23 metre jack length. Try and do it the other way, it's a lot harder. Two green. Well, it certainly put Robert Wheel off a little bit, the short jack length. Struggling with the line, no such problems for Paul Foster. Well, has he brought the jack out a little bit? He has. That's not good. He'll be very disappointed with that result. Yes, Paul Foster knows, I think, that uh, the next bow from Robert Wheel will probably be a runner. He could remove all three of the bows. Well, he could. Angle's not perfect to get the last one, but to take all three, he has to come outside onto this one, and then there, and across. I think he'll be just trying to get heavy into the jack and move it. That's a better result. He'll certainly be reaching. Yes, plain pace. Oh, is he getting two? He's not even, just one. Didn't think the angle was too good on that one to get back for the other one. The other one's just a little bit short. Mm, disappointment for Robert, just a little bit wide. Why was Paul? I had serious thoughts about going to the respot. It's the respot position here. And to do that, he'll have to play very wide on the forehand. Foster was just trying to just disturb the ball or move the jack now. The back position's covered. He needs the jack with this. He's very close. Good solid contact. Well, he has a red ball back there. And has he managed to get enough of it? Paul Vickensy's line. One shot, green. Yes, he was just a little bit on the inside. If he had picked up the jack a little bit further, he would have made a double. Things not going well for Robert Wheel at the moment, but uh, Paul Foster continuing to score. Singles, five ends. 5 0. Well, it's time to stop now for Robert Whale. This is 
Five singles, keeping the game tight, but 5 0 down with four ends to go. It's time to start scoring. Robert, as always, keeping cool. Well, there was uh, absolutely no crisis at 3-0, and not too bad at, uh, at 4-0. But at 5-0, things are beginning to get serious. Face quite a picture, Paul Foster. Normally he tells us whether he likes or dislikes the uh, the delivery he's just made, but sometimes it can be deceptive. Sometimes he uh, his body language suggests everything is wrong, whereas uh, the bowl finishes on the jack. Good goal by Robert, he's managed to leave a gap. Well, this is different from Paul. He's narrowed his line, must have put a little bit of pace on it. He's willing it forward, it has to hurry. Oh, that's a good ball. Short jack length appears to be a much, much narrower line to the jack. So yet again, Paul Foster gets uh, one shot in and uh, another single is going to appear on the scorecard unless uh, Robert Wheel can do something about this. Well, ideally, he would like to ease it off. Now, if he gets too much of the ball, the jack will come through. What he's looking at is, will that score or will that one score? That's the problem he has. The best result is to get the edge of the ball, peel off the head and get a couple... Green ball on the way through, will his own ball stop? Just <laughs> right on the edge. And that's going to be enough for a single. Hey, Dad's on the scorecard. One shot, red. Well worth looking at that again, because it was a good strike, but it looked as though it might be going wrong. The jack goes through, the red ball coming through, looked bound for the ditch. Anchors out, breaks on, and it stopped on the brink. <laughs> and Paul Foster <laughs> playfully just kicks it into the ditch. He says, get, get in. Wonder wheel. About time too, Corky. Yes, uh, Robert really did have to stop that run of singles for Paul Foster. He now needs to start scoring on each end. His first target will be to try and draw this set to tie it. He'll not be thinking about winning it at this stage.
Here it comes as the bias takes effect. Doesn't want to drop on the jack though. It's going to go to green again. Oh, that's happened a number of times on <laughs> Robert. And Paul Foster puts his hand out for the handshake. Thank you very much, mate. Appreciate it, but very unlucky for Robert. Your ball is actually cut. Your ball is in the jack. Roberts is two and a half inches, three inches behind. Well, you could see it happening, couldn't you? It was so predictable. This bowl homes in behind the jack, falls over, bobs your ankle. And St. Paul immediately goes to the cover bowl, going to the deep red one. Robert Wheel just hoping to arrive and shuffle things. Well, what has he got to do? One green. It's <laughs> a good head for red, but the shot's still against, and that's a critical bit for Robert Wheel. If he loses the shot this end, it's going to be very difficult to get back on terms, and I have a feeling that Paul Foster might well try and come over this side, because... What Robert Weed will be doing is just trying a little touch, move across. The difficulty is if Robert plays the backhand, then this area is very dangerous for Paul Foster. So he's got a choice, cover on the forehand or cover on the backhand. That's, that's my first choice was cover on the backhand. It's a little bit deep, but it's still pretty good. Well, it's up to Robert what he wants to play here, but he's got two shots available. One on the four, spring the jack across, or try and lift his own ball and bring the jack back to this area. I have a feeling he'll play forehand. It's just he prefers the back. Forehand it is. It's the, uh, it's the big ring that he... The white ring on the bowl shows us that. It's on the right-hand side. The small disc is on the inside of the curve. I do well to get back from this angle. Well, it was a good effort. He was just slightly over the weight. The line was good. I think Paul will take One a single. Green. There's no point in... Playing the last ball. Yes, 23 meter jack like that's because the mat is right up the rink. Paul Foster, it's a very good way to get a, a guaranteed 23 meters because every time he casts the jack, he has a margin of error of three meters at the other end of the rink. If you keep the mat back and try to play 23 meters short, Oh my, that is difficult. So, five shots ahead. Paul Foster with just two ends to go in this first set. Seven ends, seven singles. I would venture to say that Paul Foster is worth his lead, although uh, Robert Wheel has worked very hard with very little to show for it. I think Paul's just been marginally the more consistent of the two players.
Both these players have made themselves unavailable for their countries in the outdoor World Outdoor Championships next January in, uh, in New Zealand. Preferring to, uh, to, agree. to show their faith and loyalty to the World Bowls Tour. Robert is, yes. With the World Indoor Championships at Potter's Leisure Resort. Now, uh, as a result of that, I think uh, Paul Foster is just considering giving up outdoor bowls altogether and uh, concentrating on the indoor game. Yes, that's becoming more and more of a feature of the top bowlers where they do ease off the outdoor game. It's a heavy commitment during the summer. Oh, Robert, you're going to be disappointed with that. It's an end where he has to score at least one to force the last end of the set. Paul Foster immediately looking to see who's going to be lying on the re-spot. Peter Elf reckons it's going to be one down. And what he's looking at is if Robert drives a jack, it'll be re-spotted in this area. So I have a feeling he'll cover that on the high side. Just try and drop in if he can. He's like, it's a set lie position. Mm, this will do well to hold up. Just has to beat anything between the respot and the red balls. That's good enough. And the crowd know it. And that might even be in the count. Counting and covering. Oh, this is a major problem for Robert now because best back is green, side covered by green and two against him. Possibly three. He knows if he draws the shot minimal chances of getting a four the next end. He's played some very good bowls in the set, but uh, really he's played a very loose end on this eighth end. So he has to try and run the jack through a little bit. That's why he's playing very controlled weight to try and get to the jack. Not this time. Two shots green, first set to green. Uh, two it was, the first time either player has scored more than a single on an end. Robert Wheeler's only scored one shot in the entire set. Foster wins it, 8-1. We won't play the ninth end of the first set, we're straight into the second. All is not lost for Robert Wheel, though. We've seen so many times the player who loses the first set come back to win the second. Well, neither player too close in the opening bowls of the second set. Really is like starting a new game, so... It's not all that surprising.
Robert Wheeler, support service manager with the, with the housing company. It's one of the ironies of the game that uh, he was born in England, lives in England and works in England and yet plays for Wales. Uh, you may wonder how that works. And he certainly regards himself as very Welsh. Well, it's a bit like yourself, David. You were born in Wales, educated in Wales, live in England and represented England. That's true. I mean, in bowls, it all depends not where you live or where you were born, but with what club you belong to. If you belong to a club in a particular country, then you are eligible to play for that country. And Paul needs an edge to straighten them up. That ball just drifting off the head. Ball short. Robert hoping to get off to a better start in the second set. This ball needs to hurry a little bit more and stay up. Doesn't want to drop away. Well, it's holding Too on. Red. Too bad. Paul will have a look at it. Dragon's happy. Last bowl of the end from uh, from Paul Foster, and just like uh, Robert Wheel stops mid delivery. Yeah, just a little bit of movement, reset himself. Paul out on a big wide line again. Well, this one it's dropping short. Mm. Disturbance did get to him Three that time. Red. Oh, yeah. We have it, the, uh, the the new game idea, the whole idea that once you start the second set, you can forget the first. Robert Wheel is now on the road. Paul Foster just disturbed by a photographer at the side of the rink. Signs of Robert Wheel getting back into this match with a vengeance. A 
And Paul was to get the side of his ball, it would be useful. <laughs> Very nearly. Yes, almost enough purchase to turn it over. One red. Foster closed last time. Another forehand delivery. Trying to come into the port. Still holding off a bit. He is, and still on his own ball. Oh. Just a touch. Another touch. Back position covered. I think Robert must think about another shot here. He's got a good ball back there, so anything on this side of the head would be good. Just in case Paul manages to rest the ball off or get to the jack on the forehand. Well, that's a great place. A bit of insurance there. Yeah, a little bit, but Paul Foster still got two options. Get to the ball, get to the jack. If he runs the jack a little bit, he can make it through to here. Has to be a little bit careful, doesn't go too wide, though. Red ball on the green would create another shot for Robert. He's definitely on an inside line this time. Much, much closer with this ball. Needs clean jack. All the way, he's got it. A very, very good ball by Paul Foster. Very controlled wit. One shot, green. And that was a little bit of a rescue operation because he was one down. And he's now on the card. A little bit of a sense of relief about that from Paul Foster. Looks like being a close set. The second one is 2-1 at the moment to Robert Wheel. Paul Foster was a, a teenager when he first qualified for some of these uh, big televised events. And uh, when he got into the Scottish international teams too. Robert Wheel was just 18 when he made his debut for, for Wales in the Home International Series in 1982. An international player for 25 years. Well, just when it looked like Robert Wee was getting the head of steam up in the second set, he's been pulled back with a very good shot in the last end by. Fuzzy, and he's followed it up with two more good draws. Recovery ball by Robert. Prompting a, a little bit of the Isloin Roar there, his clubmates from Pont van Vreith giving him support.
Yes, Robert's uh, supporters battled through uh, some heavy snow this morning to get to the Salwyn Samuel Centre in Slinetley. It's a 60 mile trip, I suppose. And they're hoping they'll be able to get back tonight. One red. Well, Paul Fast Foster's narrowed the line a little bit to try and get to the bowler, Jack. He needs to keep the pace. We'll just drop the running. Chance for Rob to make three shots out of this. Holds one at the moment. Any touch on the green ball to drop it off or drop in on it. Looks good, this. Can he get the green ball? Oh, a touch on the jack would have done. Oh, that would have been a massive change if he'd have turned it at that angle. It's going to be one to red by the looks of it. One shot, red. That might well have been four shots, but Robert Wheel settling for one and now leads 3-1 after three ends of the second set. Well, I managed to collar Robert's dad, Bill, and Paul's fiancée, Pamela, to chat to me. Guys, it's hard for them out there, but it must be even harder for you watching, Pamela. Yeah, um, butterflies. That's all I can say, is just butterflies. Very nervous. Do you try and catch his eye at all and urge him on? No. Don't want to distract him at all. How about you, Bill? I mean, it must be tough watching his son out there sweating. No, no, I've watched Robert for years and years. I think I'm more used to it now. I've had the lows and the highs, so it's not too bad. You have attempted to sort of try and give him a couple of tips in between ends or something? No, I think he can learn me more than I can learn him. <laughs> Quite honest. Obviously, he'd love to take this title. He hasn't taken it before. How do you think he's going to get on? I mean, Paul's pushing him, isn't he? Well, they're great mates, on and off the green, really. Yeah, and I know they're both for trying 100%. And uh, Rob will give everything he can. I'm sure he will. And what about um, what about Paul Pamela? Is he going to be like a bear with a sore head if he doesn't take this one on that long journey back to Scotland? No, I think he's been pleased with the way he's been playing the last couple of games. So I think that's going to, if he ends on a high this season, that'd be good. And you've got engaged. So when are you getting married? Next April. Oh, congratulations. Good luck for that. Listen, we're, may the best man win, but um, it might be a precursor to the match at Murrayfield. So is it going to be Wales or Ireland that takes the honours? Well, Wales or Scotland? I've got to say Wales, haven't I? I bet you, Pamela. Scotland. Fair enough. That's non partisan. Thanks, guys, very much indeed. Back to the boys in the box. Two good opening deliveries on uh, this fourth end of the second set. It's... Uh, Paul Foster, we think, is holding the shot with the shorter of the two bowls, but there's not a lot in it. And a touch on the jack from Robert Wheel would, uh, would be just what the doctor ordered. No, well, that's the shot. Good head of balls building up, yes. Uh, Bill Wheel was saying he's watched Robert for many years. In fact, he watched Robert in Melbourne at the Commonwealth Games last year. Didn't realise he was there until I walked into uh, a, a pub one evening in Melbourne and Bill Wheel was waving away like mad. Come and have a chat. Just imagine, Corky, being a father watching your four sons win the British Isles Fours title, which is what he's done on two occasions. Yes, yeah, a lot of pride there. Bill, great sense of humour, but uh, loves to see the boys doing good. I don't think that was deliberate, was it? Well, it certainly wasn't deliberate. That's uh, something in excess of two metres short, that last bowl of uh, Robert Wheel. Would be useful to block a drive. 
Oh, improved its use there, but we're not sure that it was intentional. <laughs> well. <laughs> it's, if it was intentional, it's a bit of a surprise, but we'll see Paul Foster's ball, the big swing in Paul's ball, just the edge. Two edges and absolutely nothing for it. Well, we heard Bill Wheel say how th these two are the best of pals off the green. And uh, this game is being played in the best of spirit. There's uh, been quite a few exchanges between the two players. Quite a few smiles on display. And that's a great ball from Robert Wheel. We think it may count. Three red. Well, three red, according to Peter Roth. It's a big, big end for Robert Wheel. Once again, Paul Foster will be looking for that plant. If he gets it absolutely right, everything could go. Yes, three red could turn into three green. We hit it again. Oh, the crowd just getting behind Robert Wheel with that treble. Three shots, red. Yes, that was off target. I don't think he'd have hit anything if uh, if he hadn't struck that, that ball. 6-1 to Robert Wheel. Only four ends gone in the second set, so there's still five to play. It's a, it's a lead that he'll have to defend. It's a bit early. If he's five shots in front with three ends to go, he can certainly start to think about the protection type of play at the moment. There's just too many ends to go. The best way to defend this lead is to score more shots. Always. As soon as the identity of the finalists was known, we knew we were going to have a, a new champion. And the player has won this title before. That's a good ball from Foster. Came round the front stuff. That's what the bias is all about, of course. Robert Wheel trying to do exactly the same thing. Foster not too pleased with that. But, uh, there's a consolation for him. He's now got the best back. And uh, I was looking at a forehand shot here for Robert Wheel to take out the nearest green for three. And that's still on. But if now Robert Wheel should hit the jack, it could go right to the back. And uh, Foster would score. No, I think it's 6-1. He'd be better off just to draw with this ball. Try and pop it in if he can onto the ball. If he gets to the jack on the swinging backhand, even better. And 
Miss Paul's got a lot of work to do to get back to the jack. Here it comes. Has it got the pace? Needs to hurry to get back in. If it drops, it might be there. And it is. It's a very good last ball by Robert Wheel. Keeps the pressure on Fuzzy. One red. And yes, you were right, Corky. The right shot was the conservative option there. It's leading 6 1. If he could draw the shot, that's all he wants. Paul will play attacking now to try and run the jack through. He's got the best back ball and he's very close to the jack. Has he got it? Oh, so close. How did he miss it? One shot, red. Well, let's have another look at that shot from uh, Foster. We thought he was going to at least clip the jack. Missed it by a fraction of an inch, took the red bowl out, out of the back, but that wasn't uh, in the count at all. And he's disappointed with that because now he trails by six, seven one. Well, six one after four looked a good lead, but seven one after five looks considerably better. Well, it may only be one shot, but it's one more end played. That's the crucial bit of that score line. It's still a little bit too early for Robert Wheel to relax. Smile from Rhiannon. Just made it. Oh, it's dropping away and forcing the red out as well. One red. here at the Selwyn Samuel Centre. We see willing Robert Wheel on to force the tie break. They want to see a great final. That's certainly what they're getting at the moment. Oh, it's a beauty. That is a beauty. That tightens the whole head down. Yes, if there was any doubt about the back bowl counting, no doubt now, two excellent shots to Robert Wheel. And it's uh, crisis time for Paul Foster. He's got a good back ball. He's just trying to draw it in at the moment. He knows if he can score this end, he's got a chance. Dropped it for pace. The line was good. Two red. He would have liked to have been coming into that ball at a slight angle under the draw line. Try and get to the jack to open it up. Well, Robert Wheel played uh, the last bowl on the forehand. He's turned this one around, playing it on the backhand. Oh, it's quite deliberate. He's playing on the blind side to try and get in front of his own front ball. Didn't make it. I'm surprised that Robert didn't have the extra pace because anything behind the jack was useful. Paul Foster has got a chance to attack this. There's nothing going absolutely clean, but if he plays it with a timing weight onto the ball, 
He can squeeze the jack through. If he's a little bit wide, he'll take this one out. Well, if he's going to force it, he's, he's uh, risking taking his own nearest out. In fact, the two green bowls could go if, uh, if he had a really awful result. Well, that's maybe why he's been a little bit more conservative, although if he misses and goes 9-1 down, hard to get back. So he stayed away from the runner and trying to draw it. Oh, it's beautifully played. He's got second. Has he got shot? Yes, he has. Oh, that, uh, amazing. Tremendous ball by Paul Foster. We'll see if Robert declares it's one to green. He has. Well, that was a big, big saver. And whether they were supporting green. Paul Foster or Robert Wheel, I think the spectators here rose to that and applauded most genuinely. Look at that for a saving shot. Number one from uh, Paul Foster there. He's still alive in the set. He's only five behind now at 7-2 with three ends to play. So the scorecard for the second set with uh, Robert Wheel very much in charge. A two, a one, a three and a one against two singles. But Foster may be uh, behind in this set, but he's not out yet. Yes, two down. Robert Wheel checking that he's two down. Doesn't want uh, to drop two. Be reasonably happy to drop a single. Well, sensational accuracy again there from uh, Robert Wheel coming in and just touching the jack. And uh, for the, the fourth or fifth time in this match, when his bowl settled down, it actually pushed the jack to the opposition. Yes, the jack was always going towards Paul's bowl on that occasion. It just didn't get enough of it to push it all the way through to the red ball at the bottom of your picture. Difficult shot for Paul Foster. He's going to have to change onto the backhand to drop on that bottom red one. Well, this set isn't over yet. Trying to make it back to that back red. It's a good ball there. Robert Wheel, of course, would be very pleased with the result of his previous delivery because he cut two down to one and made... It's very, very difficult for for Foster to get two. And Rob, are you going to get back? Not quite. Well, he's getting a little bit perplexed at that one. He thought that was on a very good line. No, Paul, on the backhand. Try and drop in a little bit off his last ball into that sort of area. Doesn't really matter if he oh dear me oh no that was the problem with the photographer i'm certain of it we really do need to keep absolutely quiet it's a uh... 
Well, he's turned his back on it. It's mainly due to the pace. The line was good. Quick to realise that he was wrong there because he was only a foot short. I think Paul should have put the ball down and walked up, led, walked back again. It's line one, but Robert's got a chance to convert this into two. Better this time, this one might come back off that line. Oh, he certainly has a chance if he's got the pace, but is he running? Not made the trip. Going to lose another single. Great bowling. One shot, three. Yeah, so a beautiful head of bowls there. All of them so close to the jack. All of them so close to what they were intended to do. 7-3 then to Robert Wheel. There are two ends left. And Foster's task is getting just a little bit more difficult all the time now. He needs to tie this set if he's to, to win the match in straight sets. And uh, now he needs two doubles. Not an impossible target. Certainly very possible. And Robert, what's in his mind is score a single in the sand. And we're into tie break. Good start goal, side toucher. It's about an inch and a half past Jack High. Oh, this is narrow, surely. It's not like Robert to miss his line. He's not normally a very good line bowler. the time has come for some positive action that's quite a big target it is a big target and normally Robert would definitely have a, a go at to hit this it's just a, towards the end of the set doesn't want to make too many mistakes here it comes he'll take one away at least always oh, bang on target two balls the toucher looks like it's going actually off the confines of the rink we'll have to find a toucher to see where it is well, yes, the toucher is at the far side of the ditch, and uh, we're not sure whether it's dead or alive at the moment. That's a good strike, good solid strike, always into the middle of it. See, there's that toucher going in, and oh, it's quite clearly gone off rink beyond that yellow upright quite marker, good. and that'll be lifted out. The jack is live in the ditch. That's a good result for Robert. Good strike. Oh, that's a brilliant ball if it stays on. And it is. Oh, it's a beautiful ball. Come on line. The reaction from Pamela. And we are a foot short One green. of the ditch and in line with the, uh, with the jack. No need for a, a, a running bowl here. As close as you can get. Robert Wheeler's got another bowl left after this one. So his job is to get as close as he can to the ditch without losing the bowl. Oh, that's true. You see this ball just trying to drift past gently, gently, gently. Oh, what a reply. What a fantastic reply by Robert Wheel. I don't think Fozzie would have thought. There's any way of getting that. There's Rhiannon, big smile again. Daddy's doing the job. <laughs> well, and Paul has will be forced to try and reach this ball, push it off and stay on if he can. 
So it'll be a little bit more weight on this one. Try and punch it off clean. Set lie against. Yes, you don't need to watch the uh, the bowl coming break. down. All you've got to do is to watch Paul's face. He was interested until the last few yards of the run, then he gave up. One to wheel there. It's 8-3 in the second set. We won't play the ninth end. We're into a tie break. <laughs> Paul won the toss and has given the jack to Robert. So, uh, Paul Foster won the toss for the extra end and has given the, the mat and the jack to Robert. That's not generosity on his part. That's uh, a self-serving decision because Paul Foster will have the last bowl of this first end. On the second end of the tiebreak, Robert Wheel will have the choice as to whether to deliver the jack or to give it away. And on the third end, that right will uh, revert to Paul Foster. Now, these tie breaks, as, uh, as you will know if you've been watching the bowls this week, are not played to exactly the same rules as the, as the main game, the first two sets. This time, it's whoever wins the end that matters and whoever wins two of the three ends who wins the match. So, new tactics. Defense can go out of the window. Quite often the tie-break ends are more attacking than the, uh, the main game. just possible that uh, Robert will uh, have a go at this but not yet this is still a drawing shot to draw that jack round the corner yeah it's um, well exactly a wood short of jack high Mm. <laughs> Paul not giving Mark a lot of time, but Peter not realising that Paul was in the middle of his delivery action. Mm, this is a good ball, even better if it slides past. <laughs> Robert will narrow Too the great. line to the jack. Your ball's two for six. Try and get the jack through to the two balls or rest the ball off. It's a most difficult shot on the portable rink. Just playing that overweight shot. Hard to judge where the ball will start to break. It's coming now. If he has the pace, he's got a chance, but is he reaching? Well, that's a surprise and a tie break was shot against. I think Robert. Reckoned he was well up with that one. And that's the best back. So Foster has the shot. Look, looks like a measure of a second, and he's got the best back. Yeah, it's Welsh International Open Trophy, and uh, a whole bag full of ranking points, of course. But Robert's looking for this shot. He had the line the last time, just to get to the jack and reach it through, or rest the ball off. Either way, he must reach this ball. Has to be there. Should be a much more positive shot. No. 
will it get back from that distance? It's out in a wide line. Oh, it's struggling. It's just holding off. I can't understand why it's not getting back. Three. First blood to Foster in the tie break in this uh, Scotland versus Wales encounter. It's the final of the Welsh International Open. It's Paul handing the mat and the jack to Robert. I don't think so. Yes, it's Robert's call. This one, he's got the choice. He could have gone first to his length or he can let his opponent go first and take the last bowl of the end. Paul Foster always a, a doer opponent, very difficult to beat and the most skilled players naturally uh, gifted on the tour. Uh, so be more inclined to look at him as an opponent that's very professional, very difficult to beat, yes indeed, but the last couple of seasons he's been a different sort of character, lightened up a lot, happy with his life at the moment and the way it's going. Jack We've certainly seen more smiles per hour from uh, Paul Foster recently than uh, in the past. In this. I don't think that's a safe enough shot on this line a single. Well, the trouble with the shot bowl is that it's uh, virtually level with the jack and presents a bit of a target. Foster can draw to beat it or if uh, necessary he can run at it. Well, I'd be surprised if he drives at it because although I take the ball out it's just too much spaced, that's the problem. Better to draw. This Got a chance good. with this. This is very good. Got the gap. Paul knew it. He knew that was happening from at least three or four metres away. He could see the ball going towards the gap. And he knew. A perfect weight to trail the jack too. And Robert's got a bit of a problem here. He needs cover on that side. So he's going to have to come down the forehand. That gap is only just wide enough to allow a ball to go through. And there's a cover ball going in. It's also a second ball. Well, it's handy. It's not perfect, but it's very good. I can't see Paul changing much from his last ball. Well, once again, there's a gap both sides of the jack for Paul Foster to go through unless he's perfect. Got better oh, weight this got, time. He's got a chance off the ball this time. He needs a solid. He's got it. Well, that's the ball that Paul Foster's been looking for to take this title. And Pamela there, venturing a little smile of uh, relief, perhaps. But we're not, Paul Foster is not there yet. Robert's looking to see what the possibilities are here. But if he is able to play it, he should be driving down there and get the jack through. Because 
although this ball's at the back he can take that ball out on the way through Robert Wheel who has already lost in the final of this event twice is facing a championship lie and has one bowl left with which to retrieve it this will be a forehand runner oh he's pulled it And it's a very happy Paul Foster who scores the single shot with his last bowl of the second end of the tie break. And he wins the Welsh International Open, open title with a win of 8-1, 3-8, 2-0. Well, the first set was very, very much Paul Foster, but he was under the caution. The second set was him trying to get out of trouble. Just got an edge on the third ball. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, great match there. Good win for Paul Foster. Whilst we just wait for the presentation, just reminding all 247.tv viewers on this match that we have a prize draw. And our question for today to win a set of Taylor Bowls is which top 10 World Bowls Tour player has recently been awarded an MBE in the New Year's Honours list? When you know the answer to today's question and the previous three days' questions, send your correct answers by email to peter at 247.tv. We'll do the draw on Monday. Uh, closing date for entries is this Sunday. Best of luck, everybody. Back to the coverage. Titans are set. Down to seven. And we will just see the presentation. And Robert Wheel misses the ball. It's just so, so unbelievable. Paul Foster line a foot, less than a foot in a ditch. Robert Wheel gets within three inches and he takes the set with the last delivery. And Paul Foster facing a second end defeat in the tie break that would have forced the last end to happen but look at this all the way through drops off the ball and that's the winning shot for the man from Troon Paul Foster is well and truly back in World Bowls Tour events well, what a final. I think it's fair to say, ladies and gentlemen, we certainly weren't shortchanged there, were we? What an incredible final. <laughs> Marvellous entertainment. Fantastic. Now, we've had two very important already people already here on the rink. I've got two more to introduce to you. I'm very pleased to say joining us here in Clinetley at the Selwyn Samuel Centre is the town mayor of Clinetley, Councillor Mike Francis. Very nice to see you. And... Alongside him, his consort, Councillor Hubert Hutchman. It's very nice to see you too. Thank you, gentlemen, for being with us. It's very good to have you here with us. Okay, two very important men of Flanetli here, two very men, uh, important men of World Bowls about to uh, come on to receive your, uh, your applause, which I know you'll be absolutely delighted to give them. Please, first off, put your hands together for our wonderful Welsh runner-up at the Wales Open Bowls 2007. Ladies and gentlemen, Robert Wheel. Robert, to present, to present Robert with a cheque for £5,000 and, of course, those all-important, vital 30 world ranking points. Councillor Hutchman, if you'd like to do the honours, please, to our wonderful runner-up. Well done, Robert. Well done. Come over here and have a chat. Well done, you. A fantastic runner-up, an absolutely amazing ambassador, I know, for the sport. Everybody here feels it, and so does everybody else on the tour. But there has to be a winner, and I'm delighted to say it's another Celt. Ladies and gentlemen, the Wales Open champion for 2007, Paul Foster. A standing ovation and very well-deserved, Paul. 
and Paul, as the winner of this tournament, takes away a cheque for £10,000 and 40 world ranking points. And of course, that magnificent cup, Paul, well done. Well done. Paul, if I can ask you to scooch over here. You deserve your moments of glory and we'll be allowing you a couple more moments later. Just want to get a couple of words. Many congratulations. What a cracker of a match. Yeah, as I said at the start, and I said it was by toss of a coin and it was. Um, Robert could have won the tie break 2 just as easy. But um, I give the guy credit in the first set. I probably got a, wee bit, a couple of uh, breaks that Robert deserved to get. But Robert came back very strong in the second set and deserved to get uh, the match in a tie break. And I think as Jonathan Ross realised, you think you've got the first set, I could be on a winner here and Mr Wheel just not, does not give you any quarter, does he? No, he doesn't. I expected that anyway, but it's so difficult to keep the concentration going after the first set. Then the second set is like a whole new game. But credit for credit, Stuart. Robert played fantastic in the second set. Everybody here agrees with that, Robert. You gave us marvellous entertainment here this afternoon. Thank you very much indeed for that. It is disappointing because it's the third time a finalist here. You haven't quite clinched it yet, but I guess you, that gives you a bit of extra fire in your belly for the next year, is it? Well, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Be here again next year and hopefully go one step further. Yeah, absolutely. And in terms of a part, very partisan crowd here, I know they were behind you, but it's no shame to lose out to somebody of Paul's calibre, is it? No, exactly. Uh, Paul played tremendous, um, you know, particularly first set. Uh, got me on the ropes, really, you know, short length. And, uh, I, you know, I had to dig in. And I knew, you know, second set I would probably come back. I did, so uh, thankfully took it to a tie break. It was absolutely amazing. Now, do you think this is going to be a precursor to uh, the result on Saturday, Paul? That's putting you on the spot there. Well, that's part one, isn't it? <laughs> I think there might be a fight back. You'll be supporting them, won't you? Oh, yeah, definitely. I think we'll get them tomorrow. Absolutely. Gentlemen, all we can say is if tomorrow's match is as entertaining as this one, then we will be very well served. Thank you very much indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your uh, hands together for both players, but particularly your Wales Open champion, Paul Foster. Fantastic. Well done, you.